All right, this is uh, Hotbit. I'm here with Purge. What's up? Kevin, uh, what's your last name? Godek. 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 He's uh, mostly a Dota 2 caster, and he's here at IPL5, so we thought we might as well do an interview. Um, for all the TLers that don't know, that don't follow Dota, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, my name's Purge, or at least that's my tag, and uh, I create a variety of Dota content um, on my YouTube channel, and I have a stream where I cast games, play pubs, and I think that's about it. But it's mostly just a focus for learning and new players. And I also have a very famous guide, uh, the Welcome to Dota You Suck guy that wrote that. So everyone that, that's new that plays Dota, they suck, right? Yeah, they all, yeah, everybody everybody still sucks. Even if you think you're good, you probably still suck. Well, you know what? What, what is that called? There's a, there's a theory for that. Uh, the Denon-Kruger effect, I yeah. believe. That's it. Yeah. Oh, he knows his shit. Yeah, and it's uh, you have to you have to be good enough to understand that you're bad or something, right? Yeah, and that still happens at high levels as well. Like uh, there was a period of time, maybe like a year and a half ago, where every every month I would be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm almost a pro level, but then a month would go by and I'm like, uh, you know, I sucked three months ago. Like, and then three months go by, I still suck. So now it's just better to say that you always suck, um, and I kind of feel, hold firmly to that still. So, so uh, how do you think uh, Dota 2 has been going? It's getting more and more popular. Uh, there's more and more leagues. How, how, do you, how do you think the atmosphere is now? Um, I'm pretty excited concerning where it was a year ago, where a year ago there was very little recognition outside of other games. Um, it was mostly just Dota 2. I mean, I was like crawling the StarCraft 2 scene, just waiting for people to talk about it. Now it seems a very commonplace thing, which is exciting. So I know that as time goes on and it gets picked up at tournaments, that things will get a lot bigger. But um, I'm pretty happy with the progress right now. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you visit and post on our forums at all? Um, I visit it occasionally. Like, I like the idea that uh, you guys ban trolls and stuff because I don't like dealing with that usually. But um, the few times when I looked, where I was like, oh, I'm going to go post on the Team Liquid forums, I looked in, and none of the topics really interested me, unfortunately. So. You have your stream topic. You can interact there. I didn't even know that existed. Oh, so. my God. <laughs> All the people that, that, uh, that talk, talk in your stream topic are so sad now. I, I really didn't know that existed. So Well, you should check it out. I, I think uh, I think... Generally, if uh, the moderation can be a little heavy-handed sometimes, but I think it's better than uh, just letting everyone do what they want. Yeah, yeah, for content producers, that's important. I think it's better that way. So, um, let's do some general questions. Uh, that I don't know if uh, you've answered these in other interviews, but uh, what do you think the biggest like thing about Dota 2 is right now that it tra that makes it grow? Um, the coolest thing is that you can play with friends. I think. Um, Unlike a solo game like StarCraft, you can just log on and play with your, your bad friends or any of your friends and still enjoy playing with them without making the game weird. Like in 2v2s, 3v3s, 4v4s, you have to worry about the one guy who can't defend against the Mutalisks because he's only built like one stalker and yeah, you but lose your game and shit like that sucks. But when, when, when I play with my friends that are like low MMR, it, the game just sucks for them. It does, like, because uh, if, if you guys don't know how the MMR stuff works, I talked to Valve about that when I was in Seattle. They, um, it's not 50-50, so if you have somebody that's at... Yeah, skew's higher, right? Yeah, it's, it goes, finds the meeting point, and it goes a little higher than that, because otherwise a player like me could just do a solo mid and stomp face and control the game too easily, so they had to, like, adjust things a little bit. Um, so usually what ends up happening when I play with my terrible friends is that they end up laning against someone who is moderately better than them instead of just a little bit, so they pretty much get outlaned every single game, which isn't very fun for them, but... And they feel like they're, like, losing you the game. And they probably are, but, I mean, that's that still is statistically where it's most even, so unfortunately that's kind of what it has to be like. So I'm hoping that maybe they'll open up, like, an unranked league soon so we don't have to use Smurfs and people won't judge us for it if we feel like having casual fun you games. You Smurfs? Never. Just like once. Um, <laughs> it, it's like uh, you, you miss being able to stomp people. And I know it's not fun because for the people that get stomped, but I mean, that was a staple of Dota 1. And sometimes you just want low stress games with your friends. And if you like it, it honestly just, uh, it makes me not want to play with my friends that are bad because it makes me more likely to get frustrated and not have a good time and have to carry really hard and play super serious. It's like impossible when people ask me to go super troll build. I'm like, well, I would do that, but I can't do it at my MMR because I'm just going to get stomped. I'm not going to play carry, carry Lena. I want to, but I can't. So that's You think uh, the genre lends uh, people flaming each other? You think it's possible to get a point where everyone's kind of like nice to each other even when they lose? It's, it's getting much better than it used to be. I can tell you that for a fact compared to uh, how Dota 1 was. You didn't have to, I mean, it's more less often that you have to deal with people that are 100% new to the game, that are less likely to leave the game, stuff like that doesn't happen as often. Um, but it does, there is always going to be that easily frustrated aspect about the game because it is a team game. So that'll always be there, I think. There's like no benefit at all 
I can ever think of to flame one of your teammates in chat. Yeah. And but like 99% of people do it when they get angry. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard. I mean, like in StarCraft, you can't really blame anyone other than yourself, and people still blame the game all the time. But in Dota, I guess it's just easy targets because there's probably someone in the game that's worse than you that's on your team. Probably, yeah. Um, the, the the rule that I usually follow is I never flame somebody, and flame is a delicate word. Some people think that I rage at my teammates, but I, I mostly give constructive criticism when they make mistakes, and my tone of voice is sometimes frustrated, which is why they think I'm flaming, but I think it's best to just say, leave it to constructive criticism and leave it at that and not want to, like, you really don't want to flame. It's there's You're not really contributing anything. And the best rule I can say is if somebody flames you, just mute them immediately. First thing they say, mute them. And then they don't say anything for the rest of the game, and it's not going to bother you. Uh, who's your favorite hero to play? Um, I really like team fight heroes that control the game, so probably um, Enigma, Tidehunter, Venge are probably my highest win ratios, and I'm really good at Chen and Enchantress compared to my skill level. So um, those are I like team fight heroes usually with big ults. Um, when you first started casting, uh, how, how, how is it any different? I know you, you built your channel; it's, it's like a lot of uh, it's a lot of work. Um, but and you moved recently to LA, right? Yep. Um, and you're full time now. Um, is this just how long have you been uh, just living off this? Uh, I've been full time since probably February of this year, so a long time. Um, I didn't make any money from YouTube for like seven months, and then I got partnership, and then it kind of all flooded in and then I got Twitch partnership at the same time it was like I went from nothing to all of a sudden bam everything started kicking in so since about February I've been making at least a full time living so it's been uh, been good since then and allowed me to do kind of what I want to do which is moving casually. You feel you gotten a lot better at casting? Uh, yeah like I don't know I've uh, there's always stuff to work on um, I felt about at this level for the last six months maybe um, it's nice to get more recognition now which has kind of been trickling in as time goes on I think as people, people really uh, tune in People like that. I watched the cast where you cast the newbies play against each other. That yeah. one's funny. I think people like that because uh, you kind of have a pretty serious kind of way of casting. So then when you when you when they see you like be funny and stuff, it's kind of like a little change of pace. You think yeah. uh, you're gonna work in some comedy material? It's. I find it tough, especially solo casting. I find it hard to work in my sense of humor. If I have somebody to bounce off of, it's easy for me to exhibit my personality. But solo, I I'm just so so try hard that I just like. <laughs> I just have a hard time letting myself go when I'm casting seriously. I, I just cast very seriously, and that's how it turns out, unfortunately. Well, I think I think your sense of humor in general is a little uh, snarky, sarcastic, kind of. Yeah. It's hard to, for that to come across in like a normal kind of cast. Yeah. You kind of have to make fun of people, which is uh, may fun. come off a little yeah, mean-spirited sometimes. Good. Not against good players. I don't want to do that. It's not worth it. But there's very, very rare times where I'll negatively criticize a player, and it's only if they're really messing up bad. So Multiple times. We watched GSL co uh, Code S round of four. Um, we were sitting together. We were watching it. Um, you seem to be you seem to be pretty knowledgeable about the StarCraft scene. You followed it since the beta, right? Yep. Um, what do you think? Uh, wh why do you think that StarCraft and Dota fans kind of kind of they're like bros? I would agree. Right? Yeah. What uh, do you think that is? Um, both games have similar competitive caps, maybe. I mean, it's slightly different things, but. Where, like, I don't think StarCraft Micro is necessarily the same as Dota Micro and vice versa. It's slightly different, but um, I don't know. I think you can play both games at a pretty high level, and, like, the, some of the skills overlap, like micro -ing. When I first played StarCraft, I would, like, be the best gold league micro in the world, but I had no macro, so I'd have, like, 10 marauders, and I would just, like, crush 30 stalkers because the guys are not a micro. But, you know, I had no macro. So but once you, like, fill in all those other gaps... Um, it's uh, it's pretty fun. You can go back and forth easily, and I'm not sure, but it's I'm happy to see that a lot of people overlap. And there's a there's that rivalry with League. Yes. Everyone that, hates League. That's true, and we can team up together to hate League together, right? Wait, well, were you, did you watch any? No, I haven't been in the room yet. I'm Don't scared. lie, come on. I really haven't. I didn't walk in the room yet. Are you going to? I'm a little scared. I like uh, I told a few, few people earlier. I'm I'm afraid somebody will take a picture to me uh, yeah, watching I mean, league and then. Yeah, this is what I think. I think the league players are generally pretty nice. They they don't really hate on the other games. They just kind of do their own thing. And I think it's, and that's because I mean when you're number one in like viewer count and like players, like there's not really much to worry about. Yeah. So like, their game hasn't been really really threatened at all in any in any sense. So I think maybe that's why StarCraft players and Dota players are a little, a little antsy. So we're league. like enemy of our enemy our friend yeah exactly kind of. but I, I still you still have to realize that both games can succeed the way they are I mean it's always good to have more viewers and bigger tournaments and more fan base but um, both games can exist as they are now but it's that typical competitive mindset I want what I like to be the best and 
Biggest difference the between the two games, what do you think? Between League and Dota? Um, I haven't played League ever, so um, my knowledge is... I played like 10 games. 10. Um, I don't know. I It's kind of hard for me to make statements. There's just a couple things in the game that allow you to make mistakes occasionally, like Flash and the lack of denying I find crazy because that's such an integral part of solo mid laning is being able to outlast your opponent. So some of those things seem weird that they exist in the game. And people say that the metagame is stale as well, which is unfortunate. And also uh, the free-to-play model in League is vastly worse than the Dota one. So. I just like that I, well, when I started, I didn't like that there were no big plays and stuns. I mean, there are, but it's just not as frequent. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the one thing because I started I started playing both of them at the same time, but I only played like ten games of League because I like Dota so much. Um, so, you know, I think that's the biggest difference. But and uh, as a spectator, at least I've watched a couple streams and I have no clue what's going on in team fights. Like, and I they, I really noticed that from Dota one to Dota two, some spells got more subtle. Like the Centaur stun from the neutral creep, barely an effect at all. And I was like. Did they just not program that animation? But the reality was, they said this is a neutral creep. We don't need this to be flashy. So it just has a center going up and hitting the ground. That's minor, minor thing. So when I watch the league, it's like giant flashy AOEs that last for four seconds and cover the whole screen. So that's uh, from a spectator perspective. I think that's also a mistake that Riot made. I think that uh, it's really hard for someone that plays league to switch over to Dota because it's so different. And the and I remember asking a few people about it. Um, and I asked. Uh, as this girl, she was wearing a Teemo hat, um, like, you know, did you try Dota? Like, you know, I play that game a lot. She's like, yeah, I tried it. I like a stream day, you know, like, but then everyone was slaming me for being bad. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, that happens. And she's like, so I played like maybe a couple of games, but it was, people were kind of mean, so I just stopped playing. And she was like super positive about it forever. Huh. But it was kind of, I was kind of like, huh, like maybe, maybe uh, the, the game in the beginning, they need like some sort of like mode where there's just like maybe less heroes or something that's like makes it simpler for, for players to learn. What do you think? Um, I mean, she obviously got pushed away because of the people, but maybe teaching people about the mute button better or something, I don't know. Or maybe the earlier learning resources need to be there. The Learn tab is currently mostly devoid of content. So some kind of tutorial I think would be really useful for those players. Or if they played with a friend, that is super crucial as well. Play with a friend that knows the game well and can teach them basic things. But um, I think that would help a lot because being, sucking at games is no fun, and people will rage at you. So. You need a lot of games to even be like kind of competent. Yeah, you need months and months before you aren't completely, completely terrible. Yeah, like when my friends like uh, introduce them, I always have them play Lich. It's like super easy. Yeah. But then still, they like it's just like really, really hard for them to learn, like know where to go and stuff. Just and then you feel stressed out because you have to like tell them what to do. Yeah, I know that feeling well. I'm like trying to win my lane so I can actually carry the game, and they're like, "Dude, give me more attention! Like, you need to teach me how to play this game better." But I'm like, "But if I don't focus on my lane, then I'll lose my lane, and then we'll lose the game because I won't be carrying." You know, it's yeah. that constant balance. Do you think that the uh, fa gaming fans just trust Valve more? They just like see Valve, and they're like, "Well, oh, they're gonna make the right decision about stuff." Um, if you don't, you should. Um, that's kind of the impression that I got from being in Seattle is that they really are super amazing game developers. Um, they're all super awesome people. They're very smart, and they really have great ideas. I mean, the fact that the International Two went as well as it did—it was literally just Valve staff planning all those things. I mean, the only thing that was massively messed up was the translator, which they were laughing about backstage constantly while she mistranslated everything. And the the well, final. I speak Chinese, so I I, I got to. Oh, did you? Yeah. Was it really bad? It was like it wasn't that. I mean, it was it was okay. What about like the words? The, the English translation stuff was, yeah, was terrible. Bad, it was yeah. like <laughs> she would just not mention heroes. Like we were sitting back there, and all the buffs. I was like, well, oh well. Like it's it's hilarious. Like it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. So it's fine. I, I think the biggest difference about Valve is that um, when there's like a situation where they can make a lot of money, and a lot of corp corporations would would, uh, would make that decision like no problem no questions asked but if there's like a moral kind of like what's the right thing to do here i kind of have some faith that they would make the, the kind of like the right move as opposed yeah. to the one that would maximize profits do you know what i mean like yeah. they make a lot of money obviously but and they were very focused on making sure that people like me or other content producers can actually make the cash um, they didn't want to and they didn't want to just thrust one person ahead like for example they're never going to embed my youtube videos on the front page because that would make me the king they would make they don't want to make king makers so they want to allow ways for people to pay for the content that I make and it doesn't and without an opposite or a uh, external revenue source like Twitch or YouTube or something that way you know people could buy tickets maybe to watch my content or if they wanted they could buy in-game tickets to support me I mean they're still hammering out those ideas it's not set in but 
like the in-game ticket system is a perfect example of that and but cosmetic items things like that they want to be able to help the content producers do you uh, do you buy cosmetic items um, rarely. God, I don't know if I've actually paid for any. Have you paid for a key to open stuff? Yes. I opened a bunch of keys on a YouTube video. And What'd you get? A bunch of mediocre stuff. Did you get any strange items? No. I got, like, two Warlock staffs and two Necrolite staffs and a Spirit Breaker orb, which was kind of okay, I guess. And oh, you opened the Dire Tide chest. Yeah, I did. And I made a video about it so that I was hoping to break No even. Baby Roche for you. I got one from a fan, so I still have one. Thank you. Oh, you got fan. fans. I get, I get a lot of items from fans. That's, That's awesome. Where I get almost everything, yeah. You're like one of those girls in WoW that gets more items than everyone else. Yeah, it's I could set Popular. Amazon wish list, pretty much the same thing. It's like nice clothes and things do you uh so now that you're in la you're gonna have like uh you go to a meetup or something now um there's a couple dota people that live in los angeles like blitz and luminous and i found fluff found out fluff lives kind of locally we're gonna play in a land tournament in san diego in january which should be exciting but um yeah it just gives me options to hang out with people kind of like that so i've done a couple in person casting with lumi as well so. Do, you think, do you think there's an issue with uh, TI being too big compared to the other tournaments? Um, I don't know. I had so much fun there that I, I can't imagine that's a problem. And there's not really that many other tournaments yet. They're all in Europe. So right now it doesn't bother me. And it's only once a year. And they don't plan to make it more than once a year. So I don't really see it as a big deal, I guess. We, we should go in and watch some league together. We can both be com confused. I don't know what's Maybe. going on either. Maybe. Come on. You can put on a hoodie, some shades. They won't recognize you in there. I mean, they probably don't recognize me anyways, because a lot of people that, like, I don't know any of the league famous people are, so they probably don't know who I am either. I'm guessing. It's a good, uh, good mindset. All right. Well, I don't want to make this too long. We'll, I'm sure we'll talk uh, in the future sometime. Uh, thanks for the interview. No problem. Any shout outs you want to do? Yeah. Uh, go check out my website. It's PurgeGamers.com. That's where I host my guide, my newly updated guide. If you guys want to learn how to play the game, that's the best place to start. And then my YouTube channel is YouTube.com slash PurgeGamers. And my social media, Facebook and Twitter, are also PurgeGamers extension. Got it. All right. Thanks. Yep. No problem.